Hi there, welcome back to Leeds Lobby. Uh, it's good to be back in the UK after a, a break away in Croatia where the weather's been probably just as warm as it is here. Um, we've had quite a few comments and quite a few people within the chat room on, on the YouTube channel who've been talking about the tactical videos that we did a couple of weeks ago, uh, asking for more of that kind of content. So what we're going to be looking at today is we're going to be looking at the press. We're going to be looking at why when we talk about Jesse Marsh playing a team and, and, and his tactics are that we play in transition and we're happy to not have the same uh, possession stats as we did under Bielsa, what that actually means, why the players that we signed are going to be instrumental to that system working uh, and also why some of the players uh, that, are, that are within the, the Legion United squad that have been here a little bit longer are going to be changing the way that they play. So we're going to get into that in a minute. But before we do, please, please, please just hit the subscribe button at the bottom. Uh, if you're enjoying the content and if you're a regular viewer viewer of ours we'd love to have you subscribe click the, the notification box and also like and comment on the video because it's great to hear what your thoughts are and what we're actually bringing so let's get into it so what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at um we're going to look at what we call transition play we're going to look at how Jesse Marsh sets up to actually win games of football and score goals without actually having possession of the ball. It doesn't sound uh, too logical to a certain extent, but what Jesse Marsh's is, ethos is, is that he's happy to give the opposition players the ball. He's happy to see opposition right backs playing the ball uh, along along the back line. Um, so we, we just, to, just to move the ball over here, for example, we're talking about an opposition right back here who has the ball. And usually what you'll find is when a, when a team recycles the ball, you used to see this with, with Bielsa's team as well. What will happen quite often, um, particularly in the England setup, is we'll get the ball. It allows players to reset into their sort of attacking positions and it allows the, the team to take a certain formation and slows the game down. Uh, and allows a situation where you, the team will reform a bank of a couple of banks of four, perhaps, uh, and then you begin to regroup. You play the ball along the back line, and you do what we call ball recycling, where then the ball begins to we look to look to try and find ways in and around uh, bringing the ball forward um, and, and get into an attacking sort of transition. Where Jesse Marsh is very different to, 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 to Bielsa's, he's happy for the right backs or the centre backs of the opposing team to have the ball. And be in a situation where they're moving the ball b between them. But what he will actually do is he will, in it will the team will institute a press. So, for example, what that means is, Bamford, for example, uh, let, let's have a look in this situation. We'll, we'll, we'll cover the, what we call the half spaces. So he's, um, when we talk about half spaces, what he means is that the space between the right back and the goalkeeper here, Bamford will move into that area and he will almost block off the route to pass between the left between the right back and the goalkeeper and you'll see Aronson doing much the same way it's much the same reason because technically speaking this right back's got the ball and you'll find a centre back moving in here another centre back moving there um, you'll find this centre midfield coming and they're all giving options to the player that's got the ball what Calvin Phillips used to do particularly well is he would give the player with the ball an out ball in other words an easy ball um, where he's not going to have to overtax himself we see Adam Forshaw would always recycle the ball and what he would do is he would play the ball square the press play it around the defensive line the problem with this is it allows your opponent, the opposition team, to reset their defence in anticipation of you coming on and attacking. It's almost like an army being in the middle of a skirmish and then everybody withdraws and allows the lines to reform. But let's say this right back here has got the ball. He's in a situation where he's just won the ball from Leeds United and an attacking player's broken down or perhaps the goalkeeper here has passed the ball to him. Now he's got... And, and the number seven centre midfield here, he's got the number number five here, number six, and potentially number one that he can pass the ball to. He's got a few different options. And what Leeds United will do in this press is Adam Forshaw, for example, will he will look to cut off that opportunity for that ball to be played to the centre midfield. Hilda will cut off the, the, the situation where the ball can be placed to the right midfield. Aronson, again, will press there. Bamford will sit somewhere in between the two here and Harrison will press the actual ball itself. And what, the way this actually works is this, this team is, is in an attacking, um, an attacking formation. They're in a situation where they're now trying to work the ball out of defence. And what, what Leeds are doing and what Leeds will do is they will work in these what we call half spaces. So they're spaces in between where the ball is looking to be played where players are giving an option to the, to the ball, to the person who's in possession of the ball, and they will cut off uh, an opportunity to play the ball. James, will again, will cover the number three here. And that what that does 
is that forces this player to either run with the ball or play a long ball, which is, of course, not what, what it wants to happen because this is when the, the, the centre-halves will scoop We'll scoop the city, we'll scoop the ball, uh, and, and we will recycle the ball, and we will begin to attack. Now, I'm going to give you a really good example of what happens now. I'm going to show you some video of what happened in one of the previous games and one of the friendlies that we've just played as to what happens when we get the ball. Because Harrison, again, giving with his teammates behind him, taking away the opportunities, taking away the different ways in which that ball can be played out. What Harrison's doing is he's pressing the actual ball. He's pressing the ball handle at the minute. And, and this is an example of what we then do when we, when we go and get the ball. And I'm going to talk to you about some of the players that we signed and why they suit this system so well. So let's have a quick look at the first, at the first situation. And here we've got, um, I might be better off with a little bit of audio on here. OK, I'm going to replay that video again. Just have a look here. You see Leeds are winning the ball here and straight away, rather than recycling the ball, rather than playing the ball back to the defence and, and playing it around the back, we see a situation where Leeds play the ball straight away forward and they're all heading towards goal. They're not allowing Aston Villa here to reset their defence. And this is what he's talked about where Leeds are talking, where, where there's a lot being said about how we're looking to win the ball in opportune position so we're looking to win the ball here we're looking to win the ball in that final third because that's going to be the basis from which we're going to attack we've so often we've so often seen um situations where where particularly with England we've seen situations where um just just come out of that a second uh, pressing the wrong button it's a new app We've seen situations with England where quite often what will happen is England will win the ball and then they'll just play the ball all across the back and they take the time. You know, we're in a situation where we're meandering around with the ball. We've seen Forshaw before who will play the ball square, he'll play the ball back. He'll win the ball, but when he wins the ball, he plays the ball back. What's different about these players that we've just signed with Christiansen, um, with Adams, um, with Aronson is that they're players that actually play in the transition so what that basically means is rather than taking the ball and playing it square playing it back and looking to recycle and reset our attack allowing the opposing team to go and do the same and reset their defence what we're doing is we are so unbelievably direct and lightning quick that we are now in a situation where we're looking to play against a team that hasn't reset its defence properly. So I'll give you another example and I'm going to show this video here. This is one of the reasons why Christensen is going to be so popular at Leeds United. Look here, right? So here is looking to win the ball. He's won the ball here. What does he do with it? He's straight the way we're heading towards goal and Villa are all at sea. They're all at sea here because they have not had chance to reset defensively. So that's, this is something that is, is, is really, really vitally important. We also mentioned, if you look back at some of the highlights, uh, we had Leif Davis on the left-hand side. Now I've got Hilda here um, and I obviously, I haven't got Adams because the, 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 uh, the pitches that we're using didn't have the, the new signing. So I don't expect to see Harrison on this left wing. I expect, to, if I'm going to see Harrison, I'm expecting to see him on the right wing or at left back. And the reason for that is because with this system, we're going to have a right-footed player here that is, is, is a, an inside left, or if you like, a, um, a um, what called inverted winger. Because the ball is, the, 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 that player, when they get the ball, is going to be looking to play the ball into the middle and directly at goal. And the same on this side. Now, bearing in mind he's running in this direction, Hjelder is going to be bombing up the line. Now, what we saw with Leif Davis is there was anybody on the far, far, far um, touchline crossing the ball on that left-hand side with his left foot. It was always Leif Davis. If we were in a situation where we were seeing somebody right-footed crossing the ball from that right-hand side, it was Christiansen. Because with these players playing with their opposing foot and playing in towards the middle, these players here are going to be bombing down the wing and they're going to be the play, they're going to be providing the width. This is where we talk about wing backs providing the width. And this is why Leif Davis was in a situation where he was in it, it was it was you know bombing down the line and he was covering all of that ground. And it requires an element of fitness. One of the reasons why I think Christiansen in particular is going to be a popular member of Leeds, Leeds side is because I saw him over and over and over and over again in advanced positions, winning the ball. And Leeds are, 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 are scrapping away. They're scrapping away for every little bit of possible ball they can get. Not so they can, like Adam Shaw, for sure, play it square and play it back, but so they can very, very directly head the ball towards goal while their opposing team is still unset.
And that is the key because we look to unbalance teams. That's the Jesse Marsh system. We're quite happy for the opposing team that we're playing to ticky-tacky the ball in and around defence because we're going to press that. And the further up the pitch we, we can press, the better because we're going to win the ball back in advantageous positions because there's less of a route to go and, and our team that we're playing against is not set properly. That's what this is all about. This is how this works. But again, one thing that's important is if we've got Leif Davis or Helder up here and we've got Rasmus Christiansen up here, when, when the ball comes and we find the ball is played out and it's played down the channels, we are quite exposed. And as such, with us being exposed, if, for example, we see Leif Davis or Helder up here, what's left when the ball comes over is it's left is we've got uh, either Forshaw or Adams, probably Adams, most likely, will step back. And then we've, we've not got a situation where we've got a... Uh, we've not got a situation where we've got too much of a problem at the back because we've got cover because Forshaw steps in and provides cover in the middle and Christensen will move over. So this is how Leeds United are set up. This is how we will play. A um, few different players that I saw play this very well. Aronson is very, very good in the transition. He has got so much energy and so much pace about him that he is going to be a, a, he's going to be a nightmare to play against. He is constantly, constantly, constantly pressing, constantly nipping at the feet of the uh, like terrier almost of the, of, of the players that are defending, not giving them a minute to rest on the ball. This is what one of the things we liked about the Bielsa system. So what we talked about. People talk about Marsh and Bielsa before Marsh came in, when he just came in, saying that there was going to be a compatibility. It wasn't so much about the play in transition. It was it was about the pressing ethos. Because one thing we got from Bielsa was constant press and constant work ethic and murder ball and a really fit team. People talked about Marsh and said that in the past, people have talked about how Marsh will go into a team and improve the fitness. He didn't have to do that with Leeds United because Bielsa had worked these guys to the point where they were at the peak of their fitness. But what I'm seeing is I'm seeing Mark Roker, he's going to be a fan favourite. The reason he's going to be a fan favourite is this guy is relentless at trying to win the ball back. And in an advanced positions, I think he's going to be a really good signing for us. I think he's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to seeing him in this next season. One of the reasons why Tyler Adams is going to be great is because he's phenomenal at winning the ball back in those little half, in those little half spaces. And the Christensen is is going to be fantastic for us because again we saw on on that second clip the way in which he just constantly tenacious at winning the ball back. We're not in a situation where we're backing off and trying to force a player down the wings. We just want that ball back. Whenever we can win it, we want that ball back so that we can directly go towards goal. So I hope that's been some, some kind of help in terms of what we're to expect. Again, I do think we'll, we'll see right-footed wingers on the left-hand side, left-footed wingers on the right-hand side. Doesn't make an awful lot of sense in certain circumstances, but most of the bigger teams in Europe do work with wingers that have got opposing feet for the side in which they're playing, inverted wingers or inside, left, inside, right, as they used to be called, I believe. Um, and we do operate wing backs, and it's not because we've got three centre halves. It's because that double pivot works where we've got somebody providing cover. Um, but again, I, I I I was impressed with Adam Shaw for Shaw's performance against Villa because his instructions were different. Is there an extent to which we never saw Adam Forshaw? playing the ball forward because his job and his role was to break up play and just recycle the ball. In this system, he isn't going to be doing that. He's going to be breaking up play and then looking to play a forward ball. So I think we'll see a different Adam Forshaw than we've seen in previous months. The other thing is, do you remember David Batty? I remember a time when David Batty used to get ball and the cop used to go, shoot, shoot, because he'd never scored a goal for Leeds or he'd scored like one goal for Leeds. And and that wasn't his role. He was an enforcer and he recycled the ball. We're not going to see that kind of really ball recycling. We're going to see Leeds looking to counter-attack and looking to press while the opposing team is unsettled. And I think it's going to make for some exciting football. It's going to be fast and a lot of the time it's going to be scrappy. Not necessarily as beautiful, but it will be exhilarating and it will be interesting. Hopefully you found that informative. Dan may possibly be doing another video either a little bit later on today or tomorrow in which he will be doing some predictions as to where teams may finish next season and also marking teams on their transfer windows, who they've brought in and how vital those signings may be in terms of teams finishing the top 10, the bottom 10, top six, relegation. And he's going to be grading some of those, some of those um, different uh, transfer windows. So look forward to that. But in the meantime, please subscribe, hit the like button. Let me know what you think.